Nobody wins when the family feels I wish I could free the F from that bitch But he's so fucking gangster, he got all the lawyers scared Junkie knocking at my door, asking what they won't get Heard the feds twist the knob, but I've been trapping way too long Had to get it on me It was last July when four men jumped out of this black car and opened fire, killing 10-year-old Micaiah Wilson as she was on her way to an ice cream truck. Today, a D.C. Superior Court judge unsealed a 26-count indictment linking Wilson's murder to the 2017 murder of Carl Hardy, which was captured on surveillance video outside the Potomac Gardens housing complex in Southeast. According to the indictment, the co-defendants were all part of a street gang known as the Glizzy Murder Gang, or Wellington Park. The 26 charges range from murder to conspiracy to being a member of a street gang. During preliminary hearings over the past several months, tensions have often run high in the crowded courtroom as family and friends of the defendants sit on one side and family and friends of Micaiah Wilson sit on the other. Today, 10 U.S. Marshals were positioned throughout the courtroom, and when the mother of 17-year-old Marquel Cobb yelled out during the hearing, the judge ordered the Marshals to escort her out of the courtroom. Members of the public had to pass through additional security just to get into the courtroom today. The defendants all entered not guilty pleas. In the district, Mark Seagraves, News 4. This video was highly requested. 27 bad seconds of your life changes everything. Family, today we're going to Washington, D.C. In the wake of such a tragic incident five years ago, the community of Clay Terrace in D.C. was enveloped in a state of shock and mourning. The demise of young Micaiah had left a deep scar on the community, a stark reminder of the dire consequences of the escalating gang violence. The neighborhood streets that once reverberated with the innocent laughter of children now echoed the wails of grieving mother and the silence of tears of a community left in turmoil. Five years later, on October 20th, 2023, the U.S. Attorney's Office of District of Columbia say four alleged gang members who was allegedly involved was the last to be sentenced, having a total of over 200 years in prison. During the case, the law enforcement agencies, along with the prosecutors, left no stone unturned in their pursuit of justice following a lengthy and meticulous investigation. The prosecution was able to piece together the horrifying sequence of events that led to the tragic demise of Micaiah. Their case was built on a blend of witness testimonies, forensic evidence, and a damning trail of social media exchanges between the defendants. And just to be clear, for all the young loved ones, 27 seconds will prosecutors claim resulted in over 50 shots and a 10 year old girl losing their life may she rest in peace who we'll later discuss and more than five men getting over 60 years in prison so before we go over this one remember family i won't give you no ain't i just give you the story so with that being said make sure you like comment and subscribe we're gonna jump right to it it was broad daylight it was a summer day the second week of july of 2018 in the area of 53rd and clay street in the neighborhood called clay terrace in northeast dc when a group of masked men let over 70 shots in the community, leaving over five people struck, having one person lose their life, which happens to be 10-year-old Micaiah Wilson. May she rest in peace and love condolences to her family. Story, we are tracking a story out of the district for you right now. A 10-year-old girl was killed and several people injured when a group of men opened fire on a crowd in Northeast Washington last night. Only nine of them 
uh, were rescued and, and what we were told. Michael Quander talked to the victim's mother who said that the people who shot her daughter are cowards. And she was on the way out to the ice cream truck. Her shots. Danetta Wilson remembers hearing the gunshots that snatched her daughter's life away. That's my daughter. <laughs> she was only 10 years old. It happened here on 53rd between Clay Street and Cloud Place in Northeast Monday night. 10 year old Makaya Wilson was one of five people shot when four men wearing masks drove up to this courtyard and shot up a crowd of at least 15 people. Makaya's sister was one of the adults hit with the gunshot, but she's expected to be okay. They some cowards. They don't even know what they did to me, her father, her family. This little girl was loved. Makaya was a student at DC Scholars Charter School and is remembered as a fearless child who was ready to take on the world. The pain that I'm going through is this is never going to be okay. Never in life. That's my baby. It's just terrible. You know, police have been out here all morning long. If you take a look right over here, they still have the area where this crime went down blocked off. And now that it's daylight, they're combing through every inch of this crime scene to make sure they haven't missed anything. They heard a little girl hollering, crying. Police want you to take a close look at these pictures from a neighborhood surveillance camera. Detectives say it shows the suspects and the car they're looking for. It's a black four door infinity sedan with a missing bumper in the back. What would you say to someone who knows what happened, who knows who did this. They need to come forward. Never expect to go through nothing like this. It's my baby. Her child, who was taken away far too soon. A month in the investigation, police believe the shooting was about turf war between the Wellington Park and Clay Terrace neighborhoods. Wellington Park is a neighborhood on the southeast side of Washington, D.C. Now, according to their 22 page indictment, which we'll break down a little bit, 11 people were indicted in 2019 for the crime. This case was broken up into three separate trials. Now, that's a couple of things I want to point out in this indictment. It was actually two and ones they was facing, three other people. Also, I want to point out who authorities claim these groups were and what their names was, according to them. Now, on page 13 of the 22 page indictment, read this with me, family. Saquon Williams, also known as Head, also known as Head Money, Quincy Garvin, also known as C Deuce, and other persons who identities are unknown to the grand jury within the District of Columbia, while armed with a firearm, purposely and with deliberate and premeditated malice, took the life of Carl Hardy by shooting him with the firearm on or about September 10th, 2017, thereby causing injuries from which Carl Hardy died on or about October 1st, 2017. May he rest in peace and love and condolences to his family. Now this happened in the neighborhood called Potomac Gardens in Southeast DC. The indictment had this picture of GQ, aka Carl Hardy, inside of Potomac Gardens while taking this picture. It also pointed out that Carl Hardy, aka GQ, was a rapper and had alliances that allegedly called themselves Glizzy Murder Gang. A music video they referenced was a track called Property, released eight years ago with over 73,000 views and counting. And the indictment claimed they called themselves at one point in time, allegedly Glizzy Gang, because of the alliance Aunt Glizzy, who was GQ best friend, once close relationship with Shaq Glizzy. Now the popular influencer, Aunt Glizzy, took to social media to talk about knowing allegedly the person who took the life of his best friend GQ back in 2017, years later. Now mind you, I don't know if the statements he's saying about the alleged defendants in Makaya case going to trial and speaking on him because that wasn't in the indictment but this is just one-sided and there's always some truth in the middle but later in the video he will speak about him allegedly assuming he know the people who's responsible for his best friend life and allegedly the reason being is because of the recent indictment so they went to trial saying i was the one who did it 
It's another person that's in my phone. Let me check. I deleted the rocket ship. Boys, how? Let me tell y'all something. If some niggas sent to kill you, they don't kill you. They get locked up and tell the police that you killed somebody is truly fucking sad. That's the reason I ain't in the streets. DF is the reason I ain't in the streets. They did the most hottest shit in U.S. history. Them DF niggas did the hottest in U.S. history. So I had to get out the streets. I couldn't even be a gangster no more. I couldn't even retaliate. This is what they did. Just say, just say some niggas killed my best friend. So once they get locked up for killing my best friend, they tell the police that I killed my best friend. So now the police watching me. So now they locked up. If I can see their faces, they family still out here. So if I'm on any retaliation, the police are already in my bushes because they told them that I killed somebody. So I'm already under investigation. They pulled like a safety car, like on some hot. They put me under investigation off the break. I can't retaliate for GQ. I can't slide. I can't do nothing. I was under investigation since the first day because they put me in the case. I'm not on the police report. I'm not the person that got shot. My name shouldn't be in this. Not show up in this case. This case had nothing to do with me. A million people put my name in there. Say, and Glizzy, Glizzy, murder gang, few, all type. Never talked to the police a day in my life. Them niggas had conversations with the police. So how the police know all this? Them niggas is hot. Niggas, the police, them niggas sat down and tried to get a get out of jail free car. All them niggas sat down in the office with a prosecutor and sat there and told them my name. Niggas is hot. DF stand for the flaming. About. They tipping. I'm out the streets. I ain't even in the streets. But this is another thing. Think about this. Say if you getting into it with some niggas. I don't know them niggas from a can of paint. Never seen them before in my life or nothing. I don't even know these guys, y'all. Just say this. If they lie and say I killed my best friend, just imagine if we really was going back and forth. They neighborhood shoot my neighborhood. My neighborhood shooting their neighborhood. Say if I was hopping out. You know, like you know your ops. Like you know if you're op active. Say if I was active, I was hopping out cars down and i smoked a nigga in their neighborhood some 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 or they just in the ops just knew it nobody else knew it the ops just knew who did it because the streets we know what's going on do y'all not know they would have went to the police office and told them that one like aunt glizzy hopped out of the car right here and smoked a little tie tie because they told him that i smoked the nigga that i did smoke so like you don't think they would have told him the real murder like man aunt hopped out of the car and smoked a little john john right here like you know what i'm saying like that was him i seen him hoodie and all that like they would have told on me if they knew anything that i did they would have told they told him i didn't do so imagine if they knew some shit, dude. them niggas i'll be in jail right now I dodged jail time because of them niggas. Them niggas is hot. Who the fuck in the prosecutor office say your op name? Yo, that nigga ain't on his paperwork. That nigga ain't on his case. Why is my name in that case? Why the would anybody from they side say my name? My name ain't in this case. I haven't been shot. I'm not on these police reports. I'm not nothing. Y'all wouldn't talk to the prosecutors and put me in it. You niggas hot. Fuck about none of you niggas. Niggas ain't never did none of me. That's another thing. Them DF niggas scared as you on know, my mother. Niggas pay y'all to come kill you. Shoot from three blocks away, bro. I'm in the complex. Get your scared of the car. Walk in that mother. Come get a nigga. That's why I told you. I be getting to them niggas. They shot from two miles away. John Lee Malvo couldn't have shot me from down there. That was the stupid. Them niggas is scared niggas. They had guns in the car. They shot from through a fence. Who the can't do that? Y'all calling these niggas shooters. Park that mother. Walk your up in there. I was in there with no gun. You could have killed me. They so scared of me. I didn't have no pistol. You could have walked in that burl on my head and kind of shoot us. You know, stop at a crowd. Y'all see people. Y'all ain't about to go in there with them people can shoot back at y'all. Y'all scared this some attack. Cheeky attack niggas. I don't respect that. Niggas could have killed me. You stop shooters, y'all. Not gonna pop the car. Come get us. They hired the sniper. They had to shoot at me from four blocks away. The neighborhood shoot from five blocks away. Now, the reason I'm assuming Aunt Glizzy is saying DF in the indictment for Micaiah, the 13th count they was charged with, it alleged that between May 1st, 2017 to May 22nd, 2019, the criminal organization referred to by various names, including but not limited to DF and Glizzy Gang, GG, but which will be referred to for the purpose of this indictment, as well as in part, was a criminal street gang that based out of Southeast DC, allegedly. The indictment claims the leader, who was 22 years old when he was first arrested five years ago, now 27, was a local rapper and was the connection to Glizzy Gang, according to the indictment, DF Jizzle. He had tracks like Money Infinity, Release with 30 Glizzy seven years ago with over 94,000 views and counting. 30 Glizzy is another Glizzy Gang rapper who unfortunately lost his life while in Baltimore, which we'll probably later talk about in another video. Now, the reason I know of this video is because in the indictment, it claims that firearms in this music video match the firearms shell casing and the stolen infinity that they bought according to the indictment for $150 that was involved in Micaiah losing her life. Me so, me so. Yeah.
The dog also pointed out how allegedly DF Jizzle had did an interview in Wellington Park with Dirty Glizzy. Check out 60 Seconds. According to the indictment, Gregory Taylor, the leader, allegedly, aka DF Jizzle, was the third to be arrested months after Makaya lost her life in 2018. And now three arrests. All right, we've got more breaking news for you now. Three months and now three arrests in the Micaiah Wilson murder case. Just hours ago, D.C. police arrested Gregory Taylor and charged him with first degree murder. Micaiah is the 10 year old who was killed back in July when a group of cowards shot up a crowd in Northeast D.C. WUSA 9's Michael Quander has been at the top of this story since it first happened. He shows us the role this latest suspect may have played in the murder. For real. This is video from Instagram that appears to show the latest suspect accused of killing a 10 year old girl. The social media account was listed in court documents and linked to Gregory Taylor, the 23 year old now charged with murder. When you saw his face, what was going through your mind? It was more like emotional. Detectives called Donetta Wilson early Wednesday morning. They told her Taylor now joins Quentin Michaels and Kawan Thomas behind bars. All three of them accused of killing her daughter, Micaiah. She was precious. She was 10 years old. Micaiah died after this group of masked men were caught on video firing more than 70 gunshots into a crowd in D.C.'s Clay Terrace neighborhood. That was three months ago in July. This guy, he played a big role. He played a big role. Now, while Taylor's charging documents are not public yet, he was named in the court documents for the other two suspects. In it, police indicated Taylor was involved in purchasing the car using the shooting and sent a message to Quentin Michaels on the same day of the murder saying, let's do what we got to do. Investigators say they also found messages between Taylor, Michaels and Thomas indicating that Gregory Taylor had at least two of the guns used in the shooting. Thomas writing, a, you got both of the handguns? Taylor responded under the couch. That's three arrests in three months, and police say they're still looking for at least two more people. If that's my child, and I never can get her back. I can never go visit her. I can't. Reporting in Northeast D.C., Michael Quander, WUSA 9. Taylor is expected to have his first court appearance tomorrow at 2. Michaels and Thomas are also expected back in court tomorrow morning for their preliminary hearings. If you know anything in this case, call D.C. Police. There's a $45,000 reward for information. Now, after that arrest, more arrests will come, leading up to 11 people in total. And after cooperating witnesses and doing an investigation, authorities believe a motive, or two motives rather, was one, Quentin Michael getting shot twice by allegedly members from Clay Terrace. And also, a music video by a rapper named Lord Dude who associate himself with the Clay Terrace neighborhood. Now here's the thing, they claim this video made them want to retaliate. I couldn't find a reference. They didn't put it in the indictment. But they said this music video made the alleged Wellington Park crew upset. Also in the video, they pointed out was Micaiah just a week before she lost her life in the same pink shirt she was identified in when she lost her life. See them breathe, pressure on them can't breathe, really don't lie to me, nigga you bought. Now five years later, in July 2023, trial was stopped. Jurors will actually be played that same video you guys just saw. On top of that, one of the witnesses, Makaya, older sister, had ended up taking a stand on behalf of her sister, trying to stay strong. Check it out. It definitely made me nervous. Um, I was... I was just ready to get it over with. After two hours of emotional testimony and sometimes heated questions from lawyers for the accused, Nye J. Wilson hugged her dad 
and prayed for her little sister. We still seeking justice for Kai. The two were almost always together. Micaiah tagging along that day while Nigel went to the pool and then down to the ice cream truck. She told jurors how they were sitting on their front steps eating sunflower seeds and pickled eggs when a black car pulled into Clay Terrace and four men opened fire. Where was Micaiah, the prosecutor asked, and Nigel broke down weeping. I wanted to leap across the stage. <laughs> I wanted to leap over the over the fences, the little back, the bleachers. And just give her a big hug. Yeah, because I know that was a hard one. Nigel grabbed her little sister and saw the gaping hole in her chest. Prosecutors say she held her hand and would not let go, even as a police officer started a futile effort at CPR. Strong, brave. It took a lot to go up there and relive that moment. Police blame a long-running neighborhood beef for the 50 shots over 20 seconds that killed 10-year-old Micaiah and injured four other people. But defense attorney John Zucker hammered Nija for never mentioning the Wellington Park gang that prosecutors say is responsible. First, she said she was not aware of any neighborhood beefs. Then she was forced to admit that the day after the shooting, she named three other gangs to investigators, but never said anything about a feud between Clay Terrace and Wellington Park. When you live in the hood, you hear stuff. You don't know whether it's true or not. You know what I'm saying? And for her to get up there and say what she knew, I think they were just trying to confuse the jurors. Now, prosecutors played a haunting music video, the rapper Little Dude singing in the courtyard at Clay Terrace, a bunch of little kids all around him singing and rapping too. Among them, little Micaiah just bopping and singing along like she did not have a care in the world. Sharla, Adam, back to you guys. Just 10 years old, heartbreaking. All right, thanks so much, Bruce. After five long years, the victim's family feels some form of closure as everyone was found guilty in a trial that lasted for months. Micaiah Wilson was killed. WUSA 9 has followed her family's search for justice ever since. Wilson's innocent face has come to symbolize the horrible toll of gun violence on the city's children. Just five hours ago, a jury found all six defendants guilty of conspiracy in her murder. Five of the men were also found guilty of the actual slaying. Yeah, our Bruce Lachan was there when the verdicts were read out. He joins us live from outside of the courthouse now with the latest. And Bruce, this case really went on for quite some time. Yeah, so, I mean, it really, it's taken five years to get the guilty verdicts in a case that was really a kick in the gut for a lot of people across the city from day one. The evidence was so complicated, the trial itself has lasted for four months. But tonight, family members really feel that the jurors delivered a small measure of justice for Micaiah. Micaiah's grandmother embraced investigators after the verdicts. If she had survived, Micaiah would have celebrated her 15th birthday at the end of last month. Now we've had another 10-year-old girl killed. What? When is it going to stop? I, I don't know what it's going to take. Six defendants just found guilty of conspiracy, five of first-degree murder. They piled out of a stolen infinity, opening fire on the front porch of the Clay Terrace homes on a sultry night in July 2018. 20 seconds, 50 gunshots, four gunmen, one getaway driver, six co-conspirators. To turn themselves in! Prosecutors say Kujan Thomas, Quentin Michaels, Markel Cobbs, Doris Jeffers, Isaiah Murchison, all between 21 and 26, were part of a criminal street gang firing indiscriminately into the courtyard. The culmination of a years-long feud over turf and perceived slights. And there's nothing more gut-wrenching to us as prosecutors than homicides where children are killed. The rambunctious Micaiah was hanging out in the courtyard with her big sister. One round pierced her chest 
and obliterated her heart. Four other people were wounded. I don't think they deserve to live. I really don't. But, you know, I don't make the rules. Cobbs was the one defendant convicted only of conspiracy. Well, I guess just being in the area, um, there's the jury linked him somehow being around, uh, but, you know, uh, not really sure. Now, Gregory Taylor's lawyer tells me that he's disappointed in planning to appeal. Sentencing is set for October 6th and October 20th. Even just that conspiracy count carries as much as 15 years. First degree murder, 30 years to life. Leslie and Joe, back to you guys. So many of us will never forget that story, Bruce, and, and just the potential that was taken away from Micaiah with all those gunshots. All right, Bruce, thank you. Months later, October 20th, the five men in total who was responsible for actually going there and taking her life, according to the indictment, in total was sentenced to 270 years in prison. All but one had over 60 years. The youngest one, he didn't actually go. He just, just was charged with conspiracy and not in one and was given a six year prison term. He's the only one who will see the light of day in this whole scenario. Rest in peace to the victim once again. Love and condolences to the families. Let me know how you guys feel about this one in the comments, fam. That was the story of a 10 year old girl losing her life on a summer evening in her community between rap and neighborhood beef, allegedly, in Washington, D.C. Fam, I'll catch you guys on the next one.